Do you keep a dream journal? Do you find them helpful? I love that question. Yes, absolutely. That was last week in our intuitive intensive. We went all the way into dreams and like the three things that we need to do in order to not just remember our dreams because we always have them, but not, we don't always remember them but also to have more of them and to have more evidential spiritual dreams. Three things. First, prime yourself before you go to sleep. To prime yourself, you essentially say kind of like dream affirmations. And you always want to make sure that you don't add distance into these statements or these affirmations. For example, you don't want to say, I will dream tonight. Or I will have an out-of-body experience because adding will into that statement indicates that it's not happening or that it's going to happen at some other time. So you always want to take that tense out and just say, I am having spiritual dreams or I am remembering my dreams. I remember all of my dreams. I have psychic dreams. I am having out of body experiences and so on and so forth. But you pick some validating or affirmative statements and you prime yourself. To prime yourself, what you want to do is get into the hypnagogic state the hypnagogic state is that state of interbetween, between being awake and being asleep. It's kind of a twilighty, super tranced out state that is highly, highly psychic. In fact, it's the most psychic state that we enter into two times a day. First, when we're waking up, and second, when we're going back to sleep. So when we're in that sort of really drowsy, sort of uh, trancey state. Not asleep yet though. That's when we want to prime because that's when we're really programming the subconscious. We're really getting into those deeper levels of consciousness. And of course the subconscious is the domain of the creator. It is our subconscious that creates the reality. And so we want to impregnate the subconscious with what it is that we want it to create for us. And so if what we want to create is a reality where we have more dreams, and we remember those dreams, we use that hypnagogic state to program the subconscious. We use those validating statements. We do it for about five to 10 minutes. We say the same thing, five to 10 minutes, and then we can drop off to sleep. In the morning when you wake up, three things there too, but in the morning when you wake up, what you wanna do is write it down. Even if it's just scrawl, it doesn't matter. The scrawling of it all is an anchoring. It anchors you to the energy of that dream. For me, I wake up almost every night, like at 3, 3.30, 3, 3.13. Like I'm always waking up in the three o'clock hour and I will wake out up or I'll emerge out of a dream. And I'll, I have a pencil, I have a pad of paper. Do I turn on the light? No, my husband will get upset. But I bring that pad of paper and my pencil and I just scrawl. I scrawl whatever I can remember about whatever it is that I was just dreaming. And in the morning, you'd be surprised because you'd think, well, how am I going to read that scrawl? But the scrawling of it, the writing of it actually anchors it in the awareness and the consciousness. And it helps you to remember what you were writing down even at three in the morning. So first thing you do when you wake up is you write it down. And then when you do is you take the scrawl <laughs> and you which is on a notepad preferably because you don't want to be doing it in a lovely ceremonial journal, right? You, don't, you want to scrawl on a, a notepad. And then you want to remember what the dream is that you can read in the scrawl or remember from the scrawl and then put that entry into your dream journal. Everything that you remember, even if it seems super insignificant, like all you can remember is the color pink. All you can remember is a certain song that you heard. All you can remember is that there was a man there or there was a dog there, even if that's it. Or even if all you remember is a feeling, like you wake up feeling scared about something, or you wake up feeling really excited. Anything you remember, write it down in that dream journal. That's the second thing that you do. Doing this and getting in the habit of this really embeds it in the consciousness. And when it's embedded in there, it can grow. What happens when something grows? It gets bigger. What happens when something gets bigger? Well, it needs to go on a diet like me. I'm joking. <laughs> when it gets bigger, it starts taking up more space in the life and the evidences of it start showing up in the life. So if you do it like a habit, like a practice, you call into the experience more of it. So more dreams, more encounters. And the third part of that equation, my dear, first is priming, second is writing it all down, putting it in that journal, is to interpret your dreams. Now, Edgar Casey was the one who said, like, don't let anybody else interpret your dreams. We can thumb through these dream dictionaries and look at all these words and 
try and figure out what things mean. But what Casey indicated was that figure out what things mean for you. Because I might dream of a red rose and think of my mama. You might dream of a red rose and think of a song. So those two symbols mean two different things for two different people. So what you want to do when you've got your journal entry is you want to look through it and look for the things that stand out as symbols. Dog, rose, pink, so on and so forth. The major thematic symbols in your interpretation and then ask yourself what those symbols mean for you. So if a rose for you means your departed loved one, I actually have an exercise and we were just teaching it last week. I have an exercise where we start off with a paragraph that represents the journal entry and then we identify which one, which words within the uh, entry are the symbols and then we change it out. We figure out what the symbol means and then we replace that word rose with the meaning of it. And then by the end of that, you have an entirely different interpretation for the dream, dream all based on your own consciousness, all based on your own psychic vocabulary because of course you should have one of those. Do you have one of those? You should have a psychic vocabulary. That is just the language that you use to speak to spirit and it's also the language that spirit uses to speak to you. And if you work on your psychic vocabulary, spirit will then begin using it kind of as it's the prominent language with which to communicate messages to you. But that's a whole nother Oprah. Adrian says, I have a dream journal. I found I remember more since I started it a year ago. Thanks for the info. Absolutely, that's the nature of them. They engender more activity. Writing does that, actually, you know. In the beginning of any of my classes, I always tell my students, write down anything that strikes you as important or interesting or something you might like to go back into or something that might have some energy for you. Write it all down because that actually embeds it into the consciousness and that's how it roots there and then it can grow as well. 